back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. Last night I was scrolling on Evie Magazine's website. I've talked about them before. I think they are a fantastic publication, could not recommend them more. But I was catching up on articles, reading through what is on their front page. And there was a specific story that really caught my eye. And it isn't new. I just totally miss it from last year. And I think that it is worth a brief discussion. And if you've been watching the show for a while, you might've heard all this before. I'm sure you've seen the episodes we've done about porn, the impact on men, the sinister nature of the industry itself, what happens to women, all of it. I genuinely believe that pornography has been one of the most detrimental things to ever happen to our society. And I will say that with complete confidence. It has numbed men's brains and their physical sex lives. It has changed our perceptions of what sex should be and what it should entail. It has turned women into purely sexual objects and it has ruined the lives of so many who choose to go into that industry. And that's what we're talking about today. Before we do though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and then ring that notification bell so that you never miss one of our comment section uploads. So like I said, this is from Evie Magazine and the headline reads, porn star Riley Reed says that she lost her whole family and that porn makes life really hard in resurfaced video. And that is from May of 2023. And of course I read this headline and I go, yeah, no shit. But this is why I make these types of videos and I make them semi-regularly because society and other women in this world tell young women that this job is empowering. They straight up lie to women. You know, oh, it's easy. You'll make tons of money. There are no risks. You know, porn is safe now. You can stop whenever. You can just do it for a little bit and move on. You own all your content. And this influence is everywhere coming from all sides, whether it be organizations fighting against the stigma and the criminalization of sex work like the ACLU, where they say sex work is real work and it's time to treat it that way, or Teen Vogue writing this, saying why sex work is real work. Also, Teen Vogue has been accused multiple times of pushing their young readers into sex work. Oh, hell no. Healthy society we have, by the way, coming from Teen Vogue. So great, you know, teens are being pushed into sex work. Dogs are dying of cancer because of their kibble, which is why you need to try Rough Greens. Rough Greens knows that dog food is dead food and your pet's health is just as important as your health, which is why you should be taking extra steps to make sure that your dogs are getting everything that they need. Rough Greens is a supplement that can do just that. It contains all the necessary vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega oils, digestive enzymes, and antioxidants that your dog needs. And the best part about Rough Greens is that it is a supplement, not a whole food. You can keep the kibble you already have. You don't have to change anything. You can just sprinkle Rough Greens on their food every single day and you'll be leagues ahead from where you were. Rough Greens supports healthy joints, improves bad breath, boosts energy levels, and so much much more for your dogs. We are, we eat, and that obviously goes for dogs as well. The team at Rough Greens is so confident that their amazing products will improve your dog's health that they are offering my viewers that free Jumpstart trial bag so that your dogs can try it too. Guys, you really should have done it by now. If not now, then when? A free Jumpstart trial bag can beat your door in just a few business days. So go to roughgreens.com slash Brett or call 877-66-MY-DOG. Again, that's roughgreens.com slash Brett or call 877-66-MY-DOG today for that free Jumpstart trial bag to get your dog's health back on track. And by doing this episode, I'm trying to get our society's health back on track as well. Anyway, that's why young women should read Evie Magazine and not Teen Vogue. Or this influence is coming from people sharing why porn is liberating, like these articles. How porn made these women feel empowered. It gave me a new sense of confidence. Or this one, her legal job was making her miserable. So this woman quit and says that she found freedom and happiness on OnlyFans. Or this one, why OnlyFans is sexually empowering. Or it's just girls being inspired by the aesthetic and the content online. You know, the top OnlyFans earners with their fancy houses going on these exclusive vacations with their luxury cars, which is frankly, I'm sorry, unachievable for 99% of users on that platform. You're getting scammed. None of that is what it is cracked up to be. But the influence and the push is strong. And that is why it is so important when people like this girl, Riley Reed, share her story. Riley Reed is apparently a well-known porn star and her profile on Pornhub has been viewed hundreds of millions of times. And a couple of years ago, she did a 16 minute Q&A where she was asked about getting into porn and if she would recommend it to people. And this is the clip that really went viral and that Evie covered. I've lost my whole family and it sucks. So a lot of times when people ask me if they should do porn, I tell them no. I tell them that it makes life really hard. It makes dating really hard. It makes your family life really hard. You're putting yourself out there and the world is now judging you. You have to be okay with being shamed every day of your life. I don't even want to have children because I do porn because I'm worried of the way that people will treat my child. I mean, imagine going into an industry where every day your naked body, the most intimate parts of you are picked apart, shamed, exploited, and you think that that's empowering and liberating? And she chooses to stay in this industry. It does not make sense. But I'm glad that she's sharing the reality of it because somebody needs to. My mom was supportive in the beginning. She kind of just let me do whatever. That's the problem. You should not let your kids just do 
whatever they want to do, <laughs> you need to be a parent. And I don't think her mom was being a parent. When I started to set like these boundaries, not giving her money or things like that, it made our relationship a bit more difficult and almost toxic. And so it sucks. I don't have a mom anymore. I don't talk to her. I miss having a mom. I feel like you can't rewind and you can't go back. I don't have that relationship with her anymore. I don't ever think I will. I think that's an important line. You can't rewind and you can't go back. We've talked about that in different porn episodes and different, you know, videos about OnlyFans. But that content is permanently online. And it's wild to me that people don't consider that. Like, I grew up in this digital age. I remember sitting in classes with teachers. I remember my parents talking to me about this. Like, your digital footprint is forever. I feel like that was so ingrained in the heads of my generation because we grew up amidst all of this. And people think that when it comes to porn, oh, I can just, I can just get out of it. I can delete all my photos. No, there's always somebody that is going to have a screenshot. And on OnlyFans, what a lot of people don't realize is that OnlyFans partially owns the content that you put online. It's not all yours. You are literally giving it to the public. You quite frankly, cannot rewind. You cannot clear your name no matter what you do. I talked to my dad and he struggles with my my job being in the industry. He's also religious. Recently, I wanted to go visit him and he said that I, I can't go visit because his wife, my stepmom, doesn't want me there. When I was like, can we like go get coffee and like we go like get breakfast? And he's like, I don't want to be seen in public with you. And that just hurt so bad. I lost my family. I don't talk to like my brothers or sisters. I think that they all kind of like try to take advantage of me and stuff or they're just like my dad don't want to be around me. <sighs> I mean, how could you watch that and think that this is an empowering industry, that this job is liberating for women? She has been alienated from her entire family. She now doesn't want to have children because of her reputation. It is heartbreaking stuff, but it is also not unsurprising, and that's the sad part. All of this could have been avoided, and I hope that it will be for many women in the future because of stories like this being shared. Somebody commented and said, I hurt for her. It's not unexpected, not even unreasonable. I hope others learn that porn is not the easy money that some might suggest. Somebody else said it's sad. A lot of times young women don't realize the consequences when they get into porn because everyone just tries to preach the upside. I wonder if she would be okay with her daughter doing what she does. I'm guessing not, considering she doesn't recommend getting into this industry and doesn't even want to have children now because of how awful it's turned out. Somebody else said that's sad for sure. Choices have consequences though. And I guarantee that, especially coming from such a religious family, that this lady had more than just an idea of how they would react. She made her choice. And yeah, she 100% did. It's important to acknowledge she should take responsibility it's not a them problem. She did make this decision. And even though she makes videos like this and talks about this very candidly, she hasn't fully stopped working in the industry. And I wonder if that's because she really doesn't feel remorse or doesn't care, or whether it's because she feels so stuck and pigeonholed because of her reputation and label. I'm inclined to believe that it's that, that she's just kind of like resigned to this being her life at this point. She did though, stop filming porn with men because shocker, it was impacting her romantic relationships. Watch this. This is on Logan Paul's podcast. <laughs> by the way. He made me feel like maybe I should quit and stuff. And like, he also like, he told me that he sometimes didn't want to kiss me when I came home from work. So like, made me like feel like a disgusting person because I'm, and I'm not disgusting. How could he not want to kiss you? Mike will kiss oh you God. right now. I'm live air. <laughs> she seems so like, she's like, oh, that's not the vibe. That's whatever. I like <laughs> Oh, you really want to kiss me? I mean, I wouldn't mind it. Oh my to be God. So like maybe a small one. Are you guys about to kiss? Yeah, I just have to stop that right there. It's just weird. But the important part is at the beginning. Somebody commented and said her ex made her feel dirty, but her job didn't. LOL. And yeah, that speaks volumes. You're coming home from having sex with other men on camera. Your boyfriend doesn't want to kiss you because you've been doing that and you get angry at him. Like it, come on. It's right there in front of you. It really only takes a little bit of understanding and common sense. Somebody else said, makes sense. Don't blame that guy. Yeah. I mean, and it kind of seems like she was joking and playing coy back then, but she got married in 2021. And even though she has publicly said that her husband was, you know, proud of what she did and did not ask her to stop doing porn, did not give her an ultimatum like other people, she did stop filming with men in order to let that relationship develop because no relationships were moving forward because she was having sex with other men. So she stopped doing that. Now I think she does things alone or with women, whatever. It is not surprising that this was a deterrent for men. And like those commenters said, you can't blame them. But women online will often turn it around and point the finger at men saying they're not understanding, they're jealous, they're 
misogynistic. They're not progressive enough. They don't get that this is so empowering for women. Well, yeah, if all of that translates to they don't want the woman that they are committing to to be run through by other men every day, then yeah, they're not understanding. They're not progressive enough. That's fine. I don't think they would care being called that. Again, it's really not that hard to grasp. Now, in my mind, what is even more saddening than just the impact on romantic relationships is the impact that this job takes on your soul. And Riley did not explicitly say that, but I think you could see it in her eyes and the way that she was choking up as she was speaking about her family, the fact that she literally does not have a relationship with any of them anymore. Another young woman just spoke about this in a recent article for Business Insider, and the headline reads, I regret doing OnlyFans when I turned 18. People treated me like an object, and the money just wasn't worth the degradation. And she said, no matter what I posted, they wanted more explicit content. I ended up sending nude photos a few times, even though I didn't want to, because I felt so pressured and they were offering so much money. I would also receive terrible messages that were so degrading and I didn't see any filtering system on OnlyFans to block them. Again, it's important to remember that OnlyFans is not a porn website. They just have no restrictions, so it became one. It is not designed to protect creators. It is not designed to protect porn stars, whatever. It is a free-for-all. People think that because you own your own channel and you post your own videos, that it's empowering, it's safe. It's not, because there are literally no protections in place. She goes on and she says, it was obvious that they saw me as an object for their pleasure and not as a person. It was awful being constantly sexualized to such a dehumanizing level. I felt terrible. All the creepy attention was making me sick. Subscribers kept asking for nude photos and offering more and more money. I found myself stepping past my own boundaries and it left me feeling suicidal. And at the beginning of this article, she was saying, you know, I already would post, you know, some bikini photos online. This felt like a normal thing. I would just get paid to post, you know, more bikini photos. She had kind of set those boundaries, but quickly stepped over them. And she said, I was close to ending my life, to be honest. I couldn't live with myself and I felt like I was constantly on the edge of a mental breakdown. My life was spiraling and I needed help. Though I was raised in a Christian household, I had lost sight of my faith, but a family member noticed that I was spiraling and prayed for me. And through that prayer, I found my way back to Jesus. And then at the end of the article, she talks about how her faith was really what led her out of this. And I just cannot stress enough, and I know you guys understand this, but how heartbreaking all of that is. But what's even sadder, is that all of that is predictable. And I'm so glad that she shared her story, just like I'm glad that Riley is open about the intricacies of getting into this industry. Even though she has not left the industry, I think that her honesty is still incredibly important because porn is 100% destructive to everyone involved, whether you are the viewer or the creator. So just because you are not creating porn does not mean that it is not bad for you. It is furthering the divide between men and women. It is lowering men's testosterone. It's lying to women about faux empowerment and liberation. And I see a lot of people online pointing fingers at each other saying, well, men need to stop watching it. And well, women need to stop making it. You know, going back and forth about who needs to stop first. No, everyone needs to stop. I don't care who started it, you're gonna end it. Stop watching it, stop participating in it, stop giving this a place in the market. It is a net negative for our society. If porn went away, there would be no downfall in my mind. There would be no negative impact whatsoever and it should be eradicated. Well guys, I hope you liked this episode. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already. And if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. See you guys next time.